welcome. In this video I'm going to be taking a look at this battery tender OBD2 charging adapter. So if you find this video helpful and you want to purchase one of these, I'll put a link to it in the description on Amazon. And if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost anything extra. So this adapter solves a problem on a lot of modern cars. If you want to charge your battery from inside the car, there's often not an easy way to get to the power. Traditionally, you might use the 12 volt socket. Those usually don't have power unless the car is turned on. So when the car is turned off, one of the places you can get power is from the OBD2 port. So this is an OBD2 to SAE connector. Let's look at the back here. It says charge your battery through the OBD2 port, three amp max, and that's very important. So we don't want to exceed three amps. It can be used during key off conditions. Perfect for the battery tender solar chargers, compatible with automotive vehicles, 1996 or newer. Do not use with chargers over three amps. So again, that three amp number. So let's open this up. So here we have the adapter. So I do want to say, I don't know if this could damage some cars, so use this at your own risk. It's a risk I'm willing to take. There might be cars that don't like having power back fed through this port, so you want to research that on your own. Here is the adapter, so this will plug into your diagnostic port. This opening here, it's kind of tight and I don't have a great grip, but that is a three amp fuse. So the power pins in here are not made to carry a tremendous amount of power, so that's why you limit. And here is our SAE connector here, and you'll see it's labeled plus and minus. So here I have a Battery Tender Junior battery charger, and I'll point out some things on this, and you'll want to look at this kind of stuff on your own chargers. This says 12 volt, 750 milliamps. So three amps is 3000 milliamps, so we're at 750, so we're well under that with this. And then we have the connector here. Let me flip this over. Okay, well this is actually a little bit tricky to show, but not all connectors are going to have polarity on them written on them. So here we have plus and minus, and we want to make sure those are lined up properly. So the plus is a female here, and on here it's a male. And the reason this is a little confusing is because I have to flip this over to actually connect it. But I'll plug that in here. It's a little tight. And we can see the plus here coincides with the plus here and the minus, the minus. So we have the polarity correct. Now with different brands of equipment, you may find it has different polarity. So the way to check that out would be to take a multimeter, make sure you have your red and black in the proper ports on your multimeter and check for DC voltage. And if you put it in your meter one way, if you have a digital meter, if you put it in one way, you're going to see positive voltage. If you put it in the other, you'll see negative voltage. You want to put it in so you see 12 volt positive. And then whichever side is the black will be the negative, whichever side is the red is the positive. Now, if it does not match up with your adapter, you want to get some of these. And I'll put a link below to this also. These are polarity adapters. So if we put this in here, I'm not going to press this in all the way, but we can see here the plus is going up here to the minus now. So if this charger was opposite polarity of this adapter, this would fix the problem. So if you have a different brand solar panel or something, you may need that. So these are not a bad thing to just have on hand if you have some of these SAE connectors. I actually think I could charge my camper with this, but I'd probably need an adapter. I'd have to go check, but I don't think this works directly on my camper. My camper has a plug like this, but it has a different polarity. So if you get SAE stuff, I would definitely pick up a pack of those. So let me get this plug back in. So I think the most common use for this will be a solar charger. But you can also use things like this. This is a power bank. And I do want to disclose Togo Power sent this to me for a previous video, but we don't have any collaboration with this video. So here I could plug this in down here. It's a little crunched the way this is oriented. And I could turn this on, put plug this in, and I could put this inside of the car and charge it. So this isn't going to be ideal for every situation, obviously. Let's say you have a car out in a parking lot, there's no power nearby and you want to charge the battery up, you can't get the hood open for some reason. You could plug this in, stick this in here, leave it in there for hours till it charges and then have enough power to start the car up. So no matter what solution you're dealing with, this is always going to be a relatively slow charge method. So you're not going to use this to jump start a car, things like that. Stick this in, leave it, let it slowly charge the battery up and then go start it. Now other options would be to hook it up to a solar panel. So you have this connected to solar panel, solar Solar panel will be in the window that will maintain your battery. Another option would be to maybe crack the window, run an extension cord out the window and plug this in. So if you have a car where the hood just won't open, but you still need to charge that battery up, you could use that. Or maybe you have it in a garage so it's weather protected where you can leave the window cracked. So this adapter isn't for solving every problem, but there are certain times when it comes in really handy. Right now, I need to charge my battery and the hood is covered with snow, so I can put this inside with the power bank and get it charged up and not have to open the hood. Okay, so here I'm in my 2000 Land Cruiser and my battery's not completely dead, but it was very weak, so I went to charge it up. Now I do plan on getting a solar setup on this, I just hadn't got around to it yet, and I'll use this same adapter with my solar panel. But I have this plugged into the OBD2 port here, and I have it plugged into the power bank. 
It's hard to see here, but solid red means it's charging here and it's drawing 20 watts and this will run for looks like 31 hours. It shouldn't take that long to actually charge the battery though. I could also check the voltage off of this line too. So I'm going to leave this for a while and then later I can come out here and get this started up. So that's the battery tender OBD2 charging adapter. That's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.